Welcome to this week's view on Africa on the um, ele elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo. My name is Stephanie Walters. I'm a senior research fellow at the Institute for Security Studies. I want to start with a quick summary. Um, the elections were due to take place on December 23rd. They were delayed by the Independent Electoral Commission until December 30th for logistical reasons. At the same time, the CENI announced that election would not be, elections would not be taking place in Beni, Butembo and a, a third city in western Congo called Yumbi. Beni and Butembo is the area where there has been a, an Ebola outbreak for the last few months and where there has been ongoing insecurity for many years. The government explained uh, the fact that the vote would not be held there um, as being a function of the fact that there was an Ebola outbreak or an ongoing Ebola crisis there. Um, this raised some eyebrows, of course, because there are about 1.25 million voters in that region who will ex essentially be excluded from um, uh, being able to vote in the presidential election, although they will be able to vote in the legislative uh, elections, which for them will be scheduled for March. So the election took place on December 30th without Beni Butembo and Yumbi. Um, for the most part, things were calm. There were isolated incidents of violence, but the polls went ahead without um, um, too many irregularities. Um, high turnout, although in Kinshasa, for example, a lot of people who turned out weren't able to vote because the polling stations closed er, uh, uh, before they could. Um, but I think general satisfaction with the way the polls were conducted, uh, which was a surprise, a very, a very positive surprise, uh, because we had feared that there might be um, logistical delays or violence or confusion about the new m voting technology. Um, domestic and international observer missions have also essentially said that they believe that the polls, although there were irregularities, um, did take place in a free and fair environment largely. Um, we, uh, the winner was declared um, um, on January 9th, um, the winner of the presidential election, uh, at about three o'clock in the morning. Um, it emerged that Felix Chisikedi was the formal winner um, of the presidential election in the DRC, with 38.5% of the vote. Second came Martin Fayoulou with 35.2%. And last came of the top three, Ramazani Shadari, the ruling party's um, successor candidate at 23.8. Now, this was a great surprise. We had all along thought that the Congolese government would find a way to push through its own candidate and that Ramazani would emerge as the winner. Um, it was a surprise that he didn't. As a result of the announcement uh, that Felix Chisikedi, the opposition leader, is the winner, uh, we had far less violence in, in the DRC than we anticipated there would be if Ramazani had been pushed through. So that is a very positive um, outcome, although we have seen pockets of violence uh, since then in various different parts, much lower than we had anticipated. Now, these results have been contested uh, by a number of domestic observer missions and political parties. The Catholic Church, which had deployed up to 40,000 observers throughout the country, has said that its results do not, are not the same as the CENI's results. Um, but it has not yet said who they, uh, they have determined the winner to be or who they observed the winner to be. Simocell, another domestic observer mission, has made, drawn similar conclusions. And Martin Fayoulou, the leader of the Lamuka coalition, uh, which also includes Moise Katumbi and Jean-Pierre Bemba, has contested the elections and has declared that he won with 61% of the vote. Fayulu has taken that contest contestation to the Constitutional Court, which is the body that is mandated to adjudicate electoral disputes. It's also a body that has been uh, heavily politicized by Kabila, uh, where the judges have been handpicked by him and which has uh, consistently ru ruled in favor of Kabila over the last few years. So we do not necessarily expect that institution to come up with a neutral and objective judgment in the context of Fayulu's contestation. The Catholic Church has not yet uh, shown its proof. Um, we don't know necessarily when and how it will do that. Uh, there seems to be some reticence um, as a result of the electoral law saying that only the Independent Electoral Commission uh, can, can actually uh, uh, publish, publish election results. Um, the key issue here is not so much what happened at the polls and how people were able to vote. So the sense is not that there was any kind of cheating at that stage of the election, but more that there is uh, a possibility of manipulation during the compilation period um, where access to, to the compilation centers uh, to the observers was not allowed and where there were, there were very few independent uh, observers who, if any, who could, who could really assess whether that was being done in a free and fair and transparent manner. Um, 
Congolese civil society, in order to try and um, push for greater transparency, has requested that the Independent Electoral Commission publish um, the results from each polling station. These are normally uh, published at the polling station itself on the polling day. Uh, this was only done in a fraction of polling stations. And so what, what the Congolese Civil Society and, and also the European Union and a number of other bilateral uh, countries have done is push for greater transparency at that level. They want to see those results at that, first, uh, at that first level from the polling stations in order to assess whether Felix Chisikedi really won. Now again, I think that this is something that we're not likely to see happening, but it is, uh, uh, it is probably the only avenue uh, that would lead us to some greater understanding of the veracity of the results we've received from the Independent Electoral Commission. Now what, what does this Felix Chisikedi victory mean? It's a surprise. Um, it has led to less violence, which is a, a, a very important. It does mean that Joseph Kabila is, is, has made history by being the first president to hand over to an opposition candidate. Um, all of these are, are, are very important achievements for the DRC, if in fact Felix Chisikedi won. I think Joseph Kabila has managed to somewhat turn around a very tarnished reputation. Uh, he now looks um, a lot better than he did a few months ago, especially in a region where many have clung to power. But what does it really mean? What does it really consist of? We've been hearing rumors of a political deal between Felix Chisikedi and Joseph Kabila, um, according to which the quid pro quo is Chisikedi is, 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 is designated pr uh, president and Joseph Kabila and his elite maintain access to some of the key pillars of power, the army, key ministries, etc. This has not necessarily been proven, as has not been proven at this point, but I think that amongst large amounts of contestation from some very credible observer missions like the Catholic Church, we do need to push for, for greater credibility of this election result. It is a contested election result. Um, I'll come back to the reaction from the AU and others a little bit later. Um, what we are beginning to understand as a result of the um, legislative election results, which were also released um, over the weekend, um, is that in actual fact, the UDPS, which Felix Chisikedi leads, and his coalition, Cash, will have severely restricted power. In the legislative elections, um, the vast majority of those seats went to the ruling coalition, the FCC. It's not quite clear yet how many because it's a very large coalition with many different parties, but between 250 and 300 deputies. So a majority has gone to the ruling coalition, Kabila's party. The UDPS and the UNC, who form cash, only get 49 seats. And Martin Fayulu, Zlamuka coalition, gets under just under 100 seats. Now, this is really a big clue to how power could be shared in the, in, in the coming administration. The um, prime minister is uh, appointed from the presidential majority in parliament, uh, sorry, from the parliamentary majority. The prime minister is appointed by the parliamentary majority, which means that the FCC will have a very important voice there. In addition to um, winning the legislative elections for the National Assembly, the FCC also won um, most of the provincial uh, part assemblies, which means it will be electing the governors in 23 of the 26 provinces, and the, those provincial assemblies also elect the Senate. So the Senate will be dominated by the ruling coalition, by Kabila's ruling coalition, the provincial assemblies are dominated by the ruling coalition, the governors will be from the ruling coalition, and the national assembly is dominated by the ruling coalition. So th what this effectively means is that Felix Chisikedi will have very small, very restricted margin uh, of maneuver. Um, Kabila himself will become a senator for life. That's his, um, one of his privileges as a former head of state. It's very possible that in a Senate dominated by his own party, he may be elected to be president of the Senate, which puts him second in line uh, to, to the presidency. If something were to happen to Chisikedi, he would become president himself. Um, In some scenarios, um, this is exactly what Kabila had planned. Um, once he understood that um, it would be implausible that his candidate himself could win, effectively, um, he does not have to cede very much power uh, for the reasons I've just explained. And Felix Chisikedi cannot um, really uh, make a, a substantial difference in the day-to-day -day running of government 
or it's very unlikely that he will be able to do that. Now, that matters because what Congo needed, first of all, was an uncontested outcome to put an end to the in political instability and the political paralysis we've seen for the last uh, three years in the DRC. And also, Congo needs a change in governance. Uh, we, need a, we need strong leadership that is willing to tackle state capture, uh, entrenched vested interests within the military, within the region, within political parties. Um, and, 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 and all of that would have been extremely difficult for any newcomer to tackle. It will be even more difficult for Chisikedi to do it with, with this constellation of powers at the legislative level. Um, what, 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 what should happen now? Um, just a quick rundown on the African Union and other international bodies' responses. The African Union so far has said um, that they um, would like contestations of the re election results to come through the Constitutional Court. Um, again, I've mentioned that that is not a body that we consider to be uh, independent, um, so we don't anticipate any change in the outcome coming from them. SADC, until um, a few days ago, had also towed that line and has now come out with a new proposal, um, which is that there should be a recount in the DRC and at the same time also proposing that there might be a government of national unity. Now, those um, can be seen as being at odds with one another. On the one hand, greater transparency about the result. On the other hand, a negotiated political settlement. Um, I don't think that either one of those are very likely to bring a solution. I think that, uh, first of all, a recount would have to be uh, would have to be requested by the constitutional court. That's what Congolese electoral law says, and I think that that is unlikely. And a government of national unity, in my view, is putting uh, the cart before the horse. First, we need to resolve these contestations before we decide to uh, push aside the Congolese vote um, and make some kind of political compromise. I also don't think that um, Lamuka would be inclined to join that kind of a government of national unity, and I'm not sure that the ruling uh, that the FCC would be interested in sharing power with um, some of Lamuka's key members like Moise Katumbi and Jean-Pierre Bemba. So I, I, I don't feel that the latest SADC uh, proposal, although it is stronger than uh, SADC proposals or SADC commentary on the DRC elections have been so far, I don't think that that is a, a really an avenue um, for any kind of, of real solution here. The United Nations Security Council has also reiterated requests for, um, for clarification through the Constitutional Court. Um, it held a meeting last week at which Corne Nanga presented the CENI's findings. Corne Nanga, uh, the head of the Independent Electoral Commission, also essentially gave the UN Security Council an ultimatum in which he said, either you accept these results or we will annul them, uh, annul these elections. Of course, that is something the international community will want to stay away from because an annul annulment would mean uh, uh, allowing Kabila to stay in power for even longer, and that is probably not something that most, well, certainly not something that most Congolese want, and uh, it's unclear what kinds of uh, changes to the constitution Kabila might then uh, push through. So that is not a desirable outcome. Um, the EU, as I mentioned earlier, has asked for the publication of the polling station results, which I think is a, probably one of the most constructive suggestions. I think at this point we are in a very crucial moment in the DRC. Um, I think that could be there are others like uh, that others that uh, other bodies that feel that this is enough democracy, this change is enough. Uh, there are certainly elements of Congolese um, civil society and the population who feel that this is already enough change, that this is a, a good outcome. Um, and and so this is a difficult time. Um, I think that much will depend on what happens in the next few weeks. Um, it is really, I think, about what kind of governance Congo gets in the next uh, five years, um, whether it gets the kind of leadership that focuses on economic development on, and on improving the lives of Congolese or not. Um, but we will certainly be revisiting this issue uh, again as things progress. Um, I didn't mention the AU, let me quickly just say the African Union's position is also that the Constitutional Court uh, must, uh, must adjudicate this uh, political contestation. So I will leave it there and then I will um, see you again in a few weeks. Thank you.